Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Soul Star Live, live from the basement of the Phoenix Center for the Arts in the Radio Phoenix Studios. I'm your host, Calvin Worthen, and this is Soul Star Live. Welcome, welcome, man. I'm so excited about this show, man. I, I stay excited with, with, with doing this radio thing. So yes, every time I'm excited to talk to somebody and I'm even more excited today because I got my good friend. I can call my friend right now. My good friend, good brother. You know, this, this brother, man, Coleman, has come to Soul Star Live. Somebody should be ready to, to clap their hands and stomp their feet or something like that. <laughs> Mr. Bob Coleman. And thank you again so much for coming on Soul Star Live and blessing us with your graces, man. Good brother. How you doing? I'm doing great today, man. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you today as well. Thank you. thank you. So, Mr. Bob Coleman is a change agent, um, and we are about to have a conversation that will definitely bring some change into your life. Uh, Mr. Bob Coleman of the Bulletproof Program. This brother is is righteous in, in, in all he's doing, man. And, and he said every day above ground is a good one. So uh, that's how we were starting in the pre-show. So let's jump right into uh, who is Mr. Bob Coleman. Uh, as a radio personality here uh, in the States, you kind of like you blossomed into this uh, this thing that came from nothing. Uh, what, what I want you to try to do is tell the audience a little bit about um, your story, your journey in broadcasting and how it began uh, from the thought in your mind uh, to what you've been able to manifest, manifest in your 30-year career. Okay, man. Wow. Where did it all start? Well, you just said it. It all started in the mind, man. You know, everybody knows I always ask the question, what's the most powerful nation on the planet? And the most powerful nation on the planet is your imagination. Right and that's where it started. That's where it started for me. It started for me growing up on the south side of Chicago, being born and raised in Chicago, and growing up on the south side of Chicago, one of six siblings, four sisters, and one younger brother. We lived actually in the uh, projects for a while. I tell people where JJ and Thelma pretended to live in the TV show Good Times. We lived there for real, the Robert Taylor Holmes, right on. the Greeny Greens. And uh, but my mother and father, they told all of us as little children, they told us that we could do and be anything we wanted to do and be. And I believed them. I didn't know how, I didn't know what, but they they gave us the formula for success, the best formula for success that they had at the time. They gave it to us and they said, all you have to do to be successful is go to school, get good grades, so you can graduate and get a good job. Yeah. And that was the formula of success that they gave us. Yeah. And uh, I took their I took their advice, but as you know, as we get older, as we we learn more, I, I I just start applying different things. But the the strongest thing I had as a child was my imagination. And I would sit in my room. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and father bought me for Christmas. They bought me a little component set, which consisted of a little bitty amplifier, two little speakers, and a little turntable. And I would sit in my bedroom for hours with my little component set, and I would pretend like I was on the radio. You know, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, I still have that little amp to this day. You know, well, I got it when I was 12 years old for Christmas, and I still carry that little amp as a reminder of myself of how it all started. Where did you now? Where did you get? Day. Where did you get radio from? Like, you, you know, who were you listening to? Where, 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 where was the, the time that you ran into radio and you was like, yo, I got to be on that. It, you know, we started, I lived in a very, I grew up in a very musical house, meaning that we we played, me, my mother and father loved music, we all loved music. On the weekends, you know, we played music. I was I was a James Brown kid. You know, every family has a, a James, a, a talented kid, and that was my role, was to do the James Brown or company when they came over. You know, my mother would call me in and do the James Brown. My brother, I guess he was Maceo because he had to put the little cape around my shoulders, which was one of my mother's towels, and I would break out from the from the cape and do the James Brown. That's right. <laughs> so that's right. That's you know, you know, we, you know, we were a talented family. 
you know, we would have Friday night talent shows with the system of, you know, turning off all the lights in the house and getting my father's big, huge flashlight that carried that held about eight or nine D batteries. And we would turn that flashlight on and one of my mother's hairbrushes and it was showtime. And I was Jackie Wilson. I was James Brown and the temptations. And that's where we grew up. And so then we went from that, from, uh, from doing that to having a band. And so I formed a little band and my brother was, was on drums and I played the, uh, the keyboards and, you know, uh, Chip was on, was on lead guitar and Rocky, uh, our friend named Rocky, he was on bass guitar and Kenneth Neal, he was on the Congos. And so we had a little band and we did a little shows. And so it just, you know, it all stemmed from that. And then as I, as I grew and got older, I went to uh, Columbia College in Chicago, which was a broadcasting school college I went to in Chicago. And uh, that's when I got bitten by the, uh, I started out in t well, television broadcasting was my major. And then I found out after going to, I took a radio course one semester in Columbia College, I took a radio course. And I found out that I could be not just the guy behind the camera, but I could be the guy on the radio as well. And it was a lot of fun and I could use my imagination and create things and play music. And so that's when I think I got bitten by the book. Right and from on. that point on, it was just, I just never looked back, uh, becoming a DJ in Chicago. Uh, my very first uh, job as a DJ was working at a club called the Copper Box in Chicago. And um, or the, it, then it later changed its name to the 69 Club. And then I went from there, which was like the Copper Box. When I started working there, it was the club where everybody used to go to. Yeah. And so I can remember, you know, going to that club as the DJ and, this was before, you know, computers. We had records. Say we what had again? Records. You had you had if what? You were a DJ. You had to carry. <laughs> you had records. We had records. <laughs> you had to carry had, these records we had, around. We had, albums, you know? <laughs> we had to carry them around in foot lockers. And, and I remember one of my best my best friends at the time. He asked me one night. He said, "Bob, he said, man, man, do you think going through all this every night is worth it? Because, like I said, I was DJing at the at the used to be hot club." That was the first, it, nobody would go there. It was a huge club, but it would be empty. But in my mind, it was packed because I was the DJ and I would go there, you know, in, in Chicago, winter nights in Chicago, snow, ice. I'm there at the club DJing to what I consider to be the number one club in Chicago in my mind. And it was a packed house. And uh, after doing that for about six months, I got the opportunity to go from there to the number one up in Chicago called the Nimbus. So you went you, in Chicago. You went from, from became, imagining being at the number one club in your own space to actually being at the number one club in the city. Absolutely. And, and let me say this, you know, when you when you're living this stuff, you don't really you kinda of take it for granted. You know, when you're living it, it's kinda of like, eh, okay, whatever. You know, but looking back looking back at what I did and, and just hearing you say it was was like, wow, yeah, I did that. You know, it was really the not number one, it was the used to be club to the number one club in Chicago named the Nimbus. As a matter of fact, they did a, uh, this magazine back then did an article about different clubs or uh, different clubs in the United States. And Club 64 was ranked the number one club in New York. Everybody knows about Club 64 uh, in New York. And the Nimbus was ranked number three in oh, the wow. whole country wow. at that time. And, and I was a house DJ for that club. Uh, we did well over seven, 800 people every weekend wow. at that club. Yeah. Wow. wow. So there was even a time when we, we, when we talked before, I remember hearing that there was a time where somebody was like, when they heard you say that you was going to be on the radio, they was like, what you talking about? <laughs> you ain't going to be on no yeah. radio. <laughs> Right. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, and that was all of my friends, because you got to remember, you know, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. You know, we didn't live in a rich neighborhood or anything like that. And so people in our where I grew up, people, you know, all my friends, their mother and fathers were blue collar workers. And so, of course, their children, we all, you know, were expected to grow up to be blue collar workers. But I was the one kid. I had a different vision. You know, I wanted to be, I was going to be on the radio, how I was going to do it. So I would sit in my room, literally sit in my room for hours. And I, I, I had my, 
my mother and father's house that we lived in grew up in. I had that house wired with speakers. I had speakers in the living rooms, speakers in the hallway. And when they would come home from work and stuff, I would always give them the uh, a daily report, news report. Then I play music, and of course, on the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Memorial Day, I was the house DJ. I mean, you did the thing. It up and it was, you did and it the was thing. Time to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. You, you know, did but, the but, thing. But but it all started for, you know, again from my imagination. I would actually sit in my room and. We were the first, and I know I'm I'm uh, I'm dating myself, but that's cool. <laughs> but we were the first family to actually have a VCR on the in the in the in the whole neighborhood. Oh, we dope. got it one Christmas. Yeah, we got it one Christmas. It was an RCA Reggie Vision, is what it was called. It took about two people to lift the darn thing. It cost a thousand dollars. How much we paid for it? A thousand dollars. I know because I bought it. And. Um, <laughs> All the neighbors came over to our house on Christmas Day to see our VCR, take pictures in front of it because they couldn't believe we had one. Wow. And I would, I would actually sit in my room and I would record Soul Train. Don Cornelius' is Soul Train. And That's the bootleg. Re- That's the beginning yeah, of the bootleg. <laughs> no, no I, I, no, I didn't sell it or anything. I, I would record Soul Train. And then when Don Cornelius, I would I would only record the time when he was interviewing the stars on his show. Oh, really? You studying? Yeah, you studying? That's what's up. And then, yeah, but then I would, after I videotaped it, I would take Don's voice off, and I I would ask the, the celebrity the same question and put their voice on. I was I was pretending. You I was, was recording. Again. You were setting it up. You you was souping up and editing like we doing right now. Exactly. You, like what we doing but right I now. Was, Man, exactly. But I was, but I was making believe I was interviewing these stars. Good brother. You know, in Good my brother. in my imagination, I was interviewing these stars. In the best nation and of all. Went, in the best right, nation of all. From, that's right. And it went from imagining it to actually being able to do that. Let me, let me, let me, let me real quick, man. I appreciate your your words. We got to take a short little break here. I'm here with Bob Coleman, this Imagination Nation president. This brother is uh, uh, definitely encouraging me right now with his vision and his words. I want to say thank you so much for that. We're going to take a short break. This is Radio Phoenix's Soul Star Live. There'll be more right after this break. Welcome back. Welcome back. Soul Star Live. That's in vogue with Free Your Mind. And that's what we're trying to do today. We trying to we trying to set you up for something. This is like this the alley oop, man. This is the alley right before the oop. We want you to free your mind. Um I'm I'm here with, with our guest, uh, Mr. Bob Coleman. And uh, uh we were just enjoying a, a, a great 
conversation about how you've been able to um, uh, use imagination uh, to create the world around you and use this positive kind of projection of what you want to be since you were young. Um, and it seems almost like this is a um, this is some sort of magical thing that you've done uh, in this self exploration, this creative. Uh, I'm going to create my world around me kind of uh, uh, mindset. Um, I know I know we were talking a little bit about radio, and I do want to touch base on, on your successes in, in Nashville and uh, uh, or in the uh, was it right outside the Nashville area uh, or Memphis. Uh, it was. I know you were doing some radio stuff there, but I I really would love to try to transition into what you uh, attribute your successes to. You know how you attribute the success of that you found for thirty years in the radio broadcasting, and you've been able to interview a number of uh, artists, and you can definitely let us know because uh, we want to try to, you know, we want to definitely uh, point people in the right direction so they can see those interviews and check out what you've been doing. But um, what 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 is the, what is the the magic sauce here? And, and give us a little bit of, uh, uh, about where you got it from, how you decided to that imagination is something that you uh, are going to use as a catalyst for your life. And, and give us a little snippet about Bulletproof, good brother. All right, where, where did it all come from? It all starts with faith, man. Faith is the foundation for everything. You have to have faith, and faith is much stronger than what you know, and faith is a lot stronger than what you believe. A lot of times people, if you put whatever it is that you can, that you believe you can do, you're right. Whether it be left, right, up, down. One thing I stopped doing a long time ago is I, I don't judge people. Mm. So whatever it is that you believe for yourself, whatever level that it is you achieve for your life, if you're happy with that, that's great, awesome. Congratulations, you're, you're successful. And so where it all started with me, again, I go back to the imagination. It started with my imagination. I wish I could tell you it was something different, but it really and truly wasn't. I've lived a life using my imagination, imagining what it is I wanted to do. And then based on that, the way always has to present itself. Mm. That's the way God set the world up. Mm. It always has to present itself. Mm. You know, I was raised going to church like everybody else. I was, I was taught the Bible like everybody else, you know, and, but um, unlike a lot of people, I hold the to his word. I hold God to his word. Mm. And, he says, ask and you shall receive. Okay, I'm asking. And I'm believing that I'm going to receive what it is I'm asking for. Now, here's the, here's the rub. You have to sometimes get out of your own way when it comes to things that you want. And what I mean by getting out of your own way is getting out of your own understanding. See, faith does not make sense. The kingdom system does not make sense. It makes faith. And what that means is this, a lot of times looking at my own personal journey, things looking back, not looking, you know, it didn't, it didn't paralyze me, but looking back at a lot of things that I did, it really didn't make sense. And if I had thought about it for any long period of time, I probably would have talked myself out of it Wow. because I had a lot of friends who were trying to, who were trying to talk me out of it. When I told them what I was going to do, I had a lot of friends, and not just friends, family members. I mean, close family members, like, let's see, somebody really, really close that was trying to talk me out of my dream. Let's see, um, two people in particular that were trying to talk me out of my dream, they were very close to me. Uh, my mother and my father, how about that? <laughs> is that? Is that close enough That's for That's close. You? That's close. And they didn't. They weren't trying to talk me out of my dream because they didn't want me to have it. They were trying to talk me, and I hope you guys catch this. I'm going to say it real slow. They were trying to talk me out of my vision because they didn't see it. Hmm. But see, it was my vision. Hmm. They weren't supposed to see it hmm. because they didn't see it because it didn't fit in the world that they grew up on, that they grew up in. They gave me the, the best that they the best advice they could give. My parents loved me, both of them, dearly. They did not want me to fail. They did not want me not to succeed. So they gave me the best advice that they had. Here's what, son, we love you, son, 
Son, here's what you got to do to be successful. Son, you got to go to school, get good grades, so you can graduate and get a good job. I didn't want a job. I wanted a career. So you see, so I was able to, to um, um, regardless of what they thought, regardless of what they believed, I was able to go forward and do the things that I needed to do. Yeah. And it was yeah. was way beyond what they thought. That's right, man. It was man. way past. I was able to continue to do those things. So, but it was through faith and. It, that's why that's how I came up with bulletproof because in life you're going to be hit with all types of bullets all types of negative bullets people telling you what you can't do you, and here's the deal it's yourself you're going to tell yourself what you can't do yeah. I'm too tall I'm too short I'm too black I'm too white you know all these different things you're going I don't have enough money I don't have the resources None of the things that I did that that I did in looking in the past, I didn't have any of the resources to do. My mother and father weren't rich by any stretch of the imagination. My mother used to always tell me, boy, you got you got beer money and champagne taste. You know? Hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out. <laughs> you got, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put this one down on you got beer money and champagne mm-hmm. taste. Man. So so don't don't so don't just don't don't jump ahead on me right now because you don't talk about bulletproof without giving us the bulletproof. So you in your imagination wanted to be two things in life, right? And you just told mm-hmm. us which one was the the radio broadcasting engineer, the 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 mm-hmm. voice on the radio, the man behind the spinning wheels. You had a very successful career at that, mm-hmm. and then you had another dream. You had another role that you wanted to play in society. Right. Right. Tell us about and that. My second dream, my second, my second desire was to be a police officer. You, you, you know, wanted to be a police officer. You had like a, I wanted to be a, a thing I about be a, you. you know, I wanted to be a police officer. It was it, because I just wanted to have fun. My whole life has been about fun. I'm like, that would, that's, that would be fun to be a police officer. And so once I conquered radio, you know, what I mean by conquered was I did everything I wanted to do. I was a program director. You know, I was in LA. I met all the stars. You know, I worked with the stars. I was on concert. I, I was on stage in front of thousands of people. You know, I lived a life. And let me say this, and I say that I have to. I have to put this part in there. And this, I don't say this to judge anybody, but I'm just telling you my story and my journey. I did all of that with no drugs, no alcohol. I've never drank. I don't drink beer, gin, vodka. I never. That stuff tastes nasty to me. I never liked that. You know, so I've never been a drinker. No drugs, no marijuana, no. I, I've been offered being in that field. I've been offered all cocaine and hey man, you want a line, all of that. But I didn't want that. I just wanted to be on the radio and have fun, and so that's what I did. And so my next goal and dream in life was to be a police officer. And guess what? When I told the, my the people that were immediately around me that I wanted to, to p- pursue that dream. Guess what they told me I couldn't do? They said you couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> they said you can't do that, brother. Uh, right. I'm the wrong person to tell that to because at that time, my, my right-hand man, he was my right-hand man when I was in radio. Everywhere I went, he went. I guess you can call him my security. He was like my, I was Morris Day, he was Jerome. You know, we go to the club, I was Jerome. Get me a table. <laughs> That's righteous. That's right. We have, we have, you know, we had fun with it. So he, all his life, the only thing he ever wanted to do, he wanted to be a police officer. That was his dream. That's why he was my security because he was acting security and police, and you know, everywhere I went, he was my, you know, he was right there with me. And so I told him one day, I said, Mike, I'm going to the police together. He looked at me like I had two heads. Man, you can't do that. I'm like, why not? Because you're the radio guy. Everybody knows you, you know, locally, you're a celebrity. Everybody knows you. You're in St. Louis. And you, know, you got the number one show. And your time starting in St. Louis. You work for the number one urban station in St. Louis. Dude, you know, you can't. But here's what he, here's, no, here's why he told me I could do it. He told me I couldn't do it because all his life he had tried and he couldn't do it. So he, he couldn't he done. couldn't get into the For academy. whatever reason. Exactly. So he was projecting his failures his onto limit, me. His limitation, his limited you know, vision, his limita- you know, the, exactly. the boundaries. Again, that's some that you echoing something, right. good brother. You echoing something, good brother. 
you know, and so that's that's what he told me. And he was, you know, he didn't mean he wasn't telling me that to be mean. He told me that because he cared about me and Bob, you know, man, you know, to be a police officer, you got to realize, Bob, I'm from St. Louis. You know, he was born and raised in St. Louis. I'm from this city, man, and I've been trying my whole life to get on the force and it's political and, it's, you know, man, you know, you're the radio guy. Come on, Bob, not really. And one year after the day that I told him that one year later, I was walking across the stage, getting my badge and getting commissioned as a St. Louis City police officer. <laughs> so you you yeah. know you 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 think it you 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 see it you want it you you know you got you 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 got that Yonce song in my head right now and she she said I see it I I want it you know you you have uh, been able to to surpass other people's visions of you like what other people see you they go this is what you can do and they have their limited vision to see you in and you've been able to surpass that on, on a number of occasions so this this experience for you in achieving your goals led you to create or or study or learn and discover uh what you what you are now presenting as bulletproof tell us a little bit about that journey Bulletproof is the, is the success training platform. It's the number one success training platform in the world because unlike, there are a lot of motivational speakers out there. As a matter of fact, I've befriended a few less Brown. I consider him a very good friend of mine. And there's a lot of people with motivational platforms. And I don't say that to knock anybody's platform. I think they're all awesome. I really and truly do. What makes Bulletproof different, what, what sets Bulletproof aside uh, uh, away from the others is I like to do more listening than talking. I think that right now, everybody in the world is talking, but nobody's listening. I like to listen for stories. Let me give you a brief example of what I mean. I have a very short list when it comes to my life of people that I call my heroes, personal, real people that I know that are my heroes. And the reason why they're heroes is because they've got, they, they have lived bulletproof stories. One person that comes to mind is a friend of mine. Her name is Gail Foster. Gail is a very good friend of mine, and she's definitely one on my hero list because her story, very briefly, is you know she was working for uh, TWA years ago before they went out of business, and when they went out of business, she got laid. You know she got let go like all the rest of the TWA employees. Gail was a single mother living in St. Louis. That's when she and I met, and I had two or three friends. They all worked for TWA. Gail, they were all crying in their milk. As a matter of fact, to this day, their testimony is still how they got laid off from TWA and, you know, they still talk about that. Gail was the only one that kept saying, I'm getting my job back. I'm mm. getting my position back. Mm. I'm getting my flight, my flying benefits back. And I didn't know how she was going to do it, but that's all she kept saying. And guess what? I never forget one day she called me and she said, guess what? I said, well, she said, I'm back. And what happened was she was able to get back in with American Airlines, they gave her back all of her benefits. Like she never lost anything, all of her seniority. Wow. She didn't lose anything. She got all her flight benefits back. And it was just incredible. And so when I saw her do that, and even go before that, one of my girlfriends, as a matter of fact, her name was Marcia. Now this is this is before radio. Let me let me go back here to this is before radio. And success leaves clues. Okay. Now, my girlfriend at the time, she was very, very short. She was very, very short. But she wanted to go to the Navy. Her name was Marcia. And Marcia wanted to go to the Navy. I was 18 years old, as a matter of fact. And Marcia was my, she was 21. She wanted to go to the Navy, but she was too short. She didn't reach the height requirement. I call myself being in love, so I didn't want her to go anywhere. I want her to stay with me. <laughs> right? And so she kept getting these denial letters about, nope, you know, too short, too short. And she told me, she said, Robert, I'm going to the Navy. And, but I kept, you know, I'm, I'm 18 years old, and I'm telling her, they said no. You know, why don't you just forget about it and do something else? And now I said, I meant that in love, but they said no. This is United States Navy. Yeah. And she kept telling me, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I saw her write letters to congressmen, and she would write letters to senators, and she would, I'm seeing this stuff, and I'm thinking in my mind, she wasted her time. United States, you know, the government's told her no, the Navy's told her no, why is she still doing this? 
I never forget the day I got that call from her. She said, guess what? I said, what? She said, I'm in the Navy. She's now a retired Navy with all her military benefits. That's how she broke up so with you, I bro? I saw her do that. Being... She, she, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, Ouch. That's a part of it. Ouch. But you know what? When I, when, I, when, I, when I saw her do that, I'm like, oh, wow. And so really all I did was to, to get in radio, I just mimicked what she did. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm like, oh, she never gave up. So I just did the same thing and I was able to achieve the same thing. So all of that is the foundation of Bulletproof. Bulletproof means you never quit, you never stop, you never give up. No matter what, you never quit, you never stop, you never give up. But what about you never quit, you never stop, you never give up. But they said you never quit, you never stop, you never give up. That's right. And you can be bulletproof. That's and so right. that's what we do. And we show people that true success is based on laws and not luck. Okay. See, okay. Hold on. You know, you gonna you can't you can't brief past that one. It's true success <laughs> is based on laws and not luck. Now we got we got a, a break coming up in just a little bit, but I that you just echoed something that we might have to touch on and and, and uh, real quickly in the next segment we're going to be talking okay. about this. Uh, this event that you have going on now we got we got one minute in this segment left go and let's tell them real quickly about the event and then we'll we'll we're going to open up with it in the next segment uh um the bulletproof event is going to be on october 2nd exactly october 2nd at the wigwam resort in lynchfield arizona it's gonna it's a beautiful resort um you can get tickets for this event at eventbrite.com just right go to eventbrite.com Put in bulletproof, bulletproof three. Catch the vision. Reason why it's three because this is the third event. It's the first event in Arizona, but it's the but third it's, one. You done, that's righteous. That. But, it's, but it's the third one I've had. So it's bulletproof three. Catch the vision. Catch the and vision. I, and I dare you not to come. It's gonna blow you away. Right it's on. Right on. And I've got and I've got a surprise. I'll hold it to the end of the conversation. Okay. I've got a surprise that I'll that I'll, that I'll talk about. Okay, this is Soul Star Live. If you're just tuning in, I'm your host, Calvin Worthen, and I got my special guest on for today, Mr. Bob Coleman with Bulletproof Catch the Vision. We're going to have another conversation about that right after this break. Soul Star Live. Y'all stay tuned now. Some people say we got a lot of malice. Some say it's a lot of nerve.
Welcome back, welcome black, welcome black. Seen y'all, if you're watching on YouTube, you know, we that was our dance break. We was all dancing to that one. So it, was, it was for you to take a dance break. You might need a moment too. That was Say It Loud by uh, oh, the oh, great, wow. the great Mr. James Brown. Um, man, what an exciting uh, 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 opportunity and segue too, you know, just to be able to, to self-declare, <laughs> you know, what you're proud of, man. So uh, uh, another shout out to, to the executive producer, Kaja Brown, lining up some tunes for us here, He's staying in sequence. So uh, before the break, uh, we were getting into this uh, Bulletproof and you had mentioned um, that success has more to do with laws and not luck. Um, so if you could, if you could expound, uh, upon that, uh, and give us a little tidbit, I mean, we just want to tease them a little bit. Uh, you know, you don't want to spill it all. And I know we ain't got enough time for it all, but, uh, right. yeah, give us a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times we look at successful people and, you know, out of whatever we could assume that this was a lucky situation. You know, you were born in, into whatever, or you you knew somebody that knew somebody and they put you in, or you, you know, you walked into the place and you were, you know, invited to do something. Luck had some, you know, in, in some way it makes us, we have to, we have to assign luck to it. Like, yeah, you, you're just lucky. That's just how it is. Cause it kind of takes the, the blame and the responsibility off of, me doing the work, you know, uh, I just have to get lucky. I, you know, these are some things that I know that I've I've had conversation about in terms of the way success is. So can you can you please uh, uh, expound upon that uh, the success being more attributed to to laws and not luck? Absolutely, success is based on laws, not luck. It's like the law of gravity. I ask most, what's the law of gravity? Anytime I ask a person a question, they'll say, oh, the law of gravity is what goes up must come down. I'll say, no, that's the effect of the law of gravity. Mm. The law of gravity simply states anything heavier than air is attracted to the center of the earth. That's the law of gravity. Success is based on laws and not luck. Like I said, I can't, you know, we don't have enough time to get into the mechanics, but if you come out October 2nd, we're going to get into the mechanics of, of exactly what it is I'm talking about, and we're going to break it down and make it crystal clear for you. But all you have to do, it all starts with you. Everything right now, the Zoom that we're doing, radio, it's all uh, energy, frequency, and vibrations. Mm -hmm. Everything. There's nothing magic about a cell phone. But isn't it strange how I can be on this Zoom here in Arizona, and you can be watching this Zoom in Alaska. You could be watching this Zoom in Washington, D.C., how does that happen? Is it magic? No. It's frequencies, vibrations, and energy. That's the way the world is set up. Okay? And so with success, success works on the same principle. But it starts with you. We are not taught. Generally, people are not taught how to be successful. We're taught in schools, for instance, we're, we're taught how to be worker ants. Get to go to school, get a good so you can get a good job and work for somebody. Now, let me say this. I'm not knocking jobs. OK, OK. If you are if whatever it is you want to do in life, if your goal is to be a truck driver and you grow up and you become a truck driver, guess what? You're successful. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to be an automobile mechanic, you know, everybody don't have to be a rock star, an NFL star, you know, a movie be star to be successful mm -hmm. in all kind of sizes, shapes, packages, you name it. Okay? And so, again, success being based on laws that not luck, all successful, it's first of all, you have to know what those laws are. Yes. You have to understand them. Everything starts with understanding. And all you're getting, get understanding. Once you understand it, all you have to simply do is apply it. Now, it sounds a lot easier than it really and truly is because I ran through my life and I, you know, I've shared some things about my life, but looking back, I'm going to tell you guys, there were some days when I wasn't sure. Yeah. When I, when I left my mother and father's house for the very first time to strike out on the world, to set the world on fire, this is no exaggeration. I had $150 cash in my pocket and a borrowed car. That's how I left my parents' house. And I'm not talking about to move across town. I was leaving Chicago 
to go and live somewhere where I had never lived, didn't didn't have an address of where I was going when I got there. But I was told to come, it was to work for a radio station in Jackson, Tennessee, Kicks 96 FM. Yeah. They hired me to come out here to work at that radio station. And when I left, I had $150 cash and a friend of mine let me use their car because I didn't have a car at the time that I could that I could uh, use. And so I had I had $150 and a borrowed car. That's how I left my mother, father's house. I had a, I had a mind full of dreams and imagination. I was and just life, about to ask so that, like how much how much of this you know was trepidation? I mean, you were a young man. You this is you setting out upon. Was there any trepidation, or you know, were were were, were you in full sail thinking? This was gonna. This is gonna work. You know, whatever it is, I just have to get there. I I was scared to death. That's a part of it. <laughs> I was nervous, butterflies in my stomach. That's a part of it. Yeah. You know, didn't yeah. wasn't sure. I didn't yeah. even know I was going to live. I my mother. She my mother told me one of my biggest cheerleaders. You know, she told me, "Where are you going?" You you know anything about them people? Where are you gonna live? I'm like I don't know. You going? You leaving this house? You don't know where you gonna live. You don't know where you going, but you going? Yes, ma'am. My mother wouldn't even speak to me the day that I left. Mm. You know, not that she was mad or angry, but she was uh, so upset that I was leaving. She wouldn't even talk to me. Wouldn't give me a hug goodbye. Mm. None of that. Mm. And so I just walked out shaking, nervous. But I, when I got to Tennessee, the way it started presenting itself. The mm. way started presenting itself because it has to happen. It has it's to a happen. law. Success is based on laws and not luck. It's based on. But you're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be able to connect the dots. Guess why? Because dots don't connect going forward. Dots only connect when you look back. <laughs> mm. You know, if yeah. you if you're yeah. walking on a beach and you're walking forward, how can you look at the footprints you haven't made yet? But if you keep walking along that beach and then you turn around, you can easily look back and see from whence you came. Come on now. So as long as you're looking forward, all you're going to see is, well, if you're looking forward, all you're going to see is smooth sand. You don't know where you're going. That, that. So, uh, so everything, <laughs> everything I'm sharing with you guys now is me looking back yeah. at the footprints I made. That's right. Not at the footprints I'm going to make. That's Does right. Does that make sense? That's righteous. That's righteous. That's Mr. Bob Coleman, motivational speaker, <laughs> change maker. Uh, this this is a pretty um, interesting situation. I'd like I'd like to know, um, in particular about. I mean, I remember some years ago that that the there was a video that came out like the secret or something like that. I remember they said they talked about the secret. And they mentioned the law of attraction, and I know when you when your statement makes me um, wonder. You know, you you. It says laws, not law. So you talked about law of gravity, and and I understand uh, somewhat of the law of attraction. And so these things are working inside of our consciousness. These this this attraction, this imagination, all of these things that that you're speaking of. This is like a subconscious activity. Um, what what are you like, or how do you like? What are, what are your recommendations for like the negative self-talk is does bulletproof uh address uh negative self-talk oh absolutely Neg- you, you have to every for every action there's a reaction mm-hmm. and so you have to counter but you have to consciously you have to consciously do that every time there's a negative thought you have to immediately replace it with a positive thought affirmations affirmations are huge there's an affirmation that I say each and every day. You have to say your daily affirmations. They don't have to be a long, drawn-out speech. You have to remember. Uh, an affirmation could be something as simple as, I am great. There's greatness in me. Mm. I was born to be successful. Mm. That's it. That's your daily affirmation. Mm. And every time you have a negative thought, like, I can't do it, you say, no, I'm great. There's greatness in me. Yeah. I was born yeah. to be successful. Now, you attach that success to whatever it is you need to attach it to. Once you do that, the way is going to present itself. It has to. I like that. It I has like that. to. Now, if if you don't, just because you don't answer the call, because there's another family, there's another family, there's a very popular, very famous. Go ahead. 
Have you ever heard of the Have you ever heard of the They family? They, no, no. Yeah, the They. Everybody's heard of the They because everybody talks about them all the while, every day. <laughs> you know, when I say They, it's the T H E Y They. Yeah. Because people always say they said this. Well, are you going to get a job? They said that. The they. I'm like, who are these they? Because the days, they know everything, supposedly. They do. They said they're not hiring. They said there's no more jobs. They said I can't do it. They, they, they. Who are these days? I don't listen to the they family. Great is he that is in me, the he that lives in the world. That's what I believe. Yeah. And so because of that, I step out on that. And that's what you have to do. It starts with you. But if you allow yourself to talk yourself out of it, if you allow your friends and family to tell you why it just doesn't make sense to do some of the things you're thinking about doing, yeah. believe you, I've been there. It didn't make sense for me to move. To, it didn't make sense for me to come to Arizona, which is where I am right now. I, I, I relocated to Arizona in the beginning and in the very middle of the pandemic when people were you know, getting sent home from their jobs and People were told to stay put and all these different things, but not me. I'm like, I'm going to Arizona. And because I moved to Arizona, I was able to meet people like, like you guys. Right you know, on. great people that are doing awesome things. You know, so it's not going to make sense all the time. It really isn't. But you just got to start with you. It starts with believing in you, and you have to be bulletproof. And so when you come out on October 2nd, you guys are going to get the nuts, the bolts of the whole deal. It starts at 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, you go online and get your tickets. But here's what I told you I was going to mention before. I love Bulletproof. I love helping people, okay? This thing to me is not about money. I, I don't have any Bulletproof programs that I'm selling you or sign up for Bulletproof and it's so much a month. No, I don't have any. This is not a money-driven. This, this, I'm not driven. My motivation is not money. My motivation is seeing other people be successful. I love it. That's right what I live for. Right on. And right so, on. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand behind exactly what I'm saying. I'm going to say this. Anybody and everybody watching this Zoom interview right now today, you can come to Bulletproof absolutely free. Wow. Absolutely free. I'm not, I'm not looking for nobody's money. Wow. Okay? Absolutely free. When you get to the event, all you have to do is say, Mr. Coleman invited me via the Zoom interview that I saw on Radio on Phoenix. And, 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 and so Star Live. Oh, uh, we there you go. They better say y'all better say. say it right. You we got the interview right. on Soul Star Live. We get to come in and check out the bulletproof. Man, that is that's I'm that's what's up, good brother. I'm hey, I, and I that means that you need to be there then. We should see you there, listener, watcher, viewer. That's righteous now. You, you, you know, we, we about to uh, run out of time in this segment. We only have a little bit left in there, and I want to be, I'm thankful that you have uh, come on here and gave us uh, such a, a, a blessing uh, of information, a wealth of uh, informa information and, and idea. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your, your weekly encouragement that you give out on the Bulletproof website and, and how people can go ahead and, and uh, connect with you and get some, uh, get some encouragement through the week? Absolutely. Every week, again, free of charge, all you have to do is go to bulletproofctv.com. That's the website. And the phone number, the uh, the call-in number for that, every Friday morning call, depending on the, uh, the um, time zone you're in here in Arizona, it's 7 a.m. It's every Friday morning at 7 a.m. You can dial in. The call lasts for about 30 minutes. So this is a live call. You don't have to talk. You don't have to say your name. You don't have to say anything. You just dial in and listen. I have people that dial in from all over the country every Friday morning, different time zones. They're dialing in. They're getting their dose of bulletproof for the week. So that's each and every Friday morning at, um, at 9 o'clock. Let me see if I can get the, uh, get the website. I mean, get the uh, information for you guys real quick before we run out of time. That's righteous. That's righteous. So. If you are a listener, if you are a viewer on uh, the, the YouTube or, hey, you know, reach out to us, leave some comments, uh, like and share and let people know uh, about what we got going on here. We're trying to raise the frequency, raise the vibration uh, in the valley, and we want to definitely move in, in an empowering format. Um, so I'm absolutely grateful for, for the information there. I hope to see you there October 2nd. 
Um, I'm excited about about seeing what's going on with the Bulletproof. So you need to uh, 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 definitely check out the website if you want more information uh, about what's going on and, and how you can get yourself registered. Um, this is Soul Star Live. And uh, we got okay. Mister Mister Bob Coleman here, man. I'm, I'm, man. This is this has been great, man. This has been great. Awesome. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you having me on. And the number for the Friday morning call is area code six zero two five eight zero nine three seven two. That's area code six zero two five eight zero nine three seven two. And then the pin number is two five six six nine two one pound. Two five six six nine two one pound. That'll put you on the Friday morning call each and every Friday morning, seven o'clock a.m. Arizona time. Check your time zones. But again, if you come out to the Bulletproof Fit, I guarantee you, you are not going to be disappointed. It's going to be a fun-filled day. Starts at ten o'clock, two o'clock. It's going to be music fun. The way we're going to present this information to you guys is going to be a lot of fun, and uh, it's going to be right there at the Wigwam Resort. 300 East Wigwam Boulevard in Lynchfield Park. That's where it's going to be held, the beautiful Wigwam Resort, beautiful resort. And so, you guys, it's going to be just a great, great day. And again, all you have to do is say Soul Star. I heard it. You know, I was, I, I saw the interview on Soul Star, and we're going to have a list there, and you get in absolutely free of charge oh, because, again, this is not a, a money grab by right any stretch on, of the right imagination. On, right on, right on, good brother. Brother Bob Coleman, Mr. Bob Coleman, we thank you so much for your time and your information. Uh, Soul Star Live is a production of Desert Soul Media. Our executive producer is Kaja Brown. I'm Calvin Worthen. You can follow me at Calvin J. Worthen underscore Big Calvin on Instagram. And check us out on Soul Star Live on Facebook and uh, uh, um, also on uh, Instagram, Radio Phoenix. Uh, check us out there for sure. Mr. Bob Coleman, thank you again. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Right on. So start live. Have a great week and good night. Sick of name brand clothes. Sick of RB. Cocaine and crap, which brings sickness to black. Sick of swole head rappers with they sickening raps. Clap and gap. Making a whole sick world collapse. The facts are getting sick and even sicker, perhaps. I stick a push to make a bundle to escape the snap. Man, life can get all up in your ass, baby. You better work it out. Now let me tell you what it's all about. A skin not considered equal. A meteor has more right than my people who be wasting time screaming who they've hated. That's why the native tongues has officially been reinstated. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 B